friends, we are going to begin the service. If everyone would please have a seat. We are going to begin the funeral service for Mrs. Jeanette Myers. If you have a cell phone, I'd ask you kindly to place it in the silent mode at this time or turn it completely off. Also, I'd like to welcome on behalf of the family, anybody attending live stream, uh, thank you. And services will be conducted by Cantor Amy Zussman, who's gonna start with the ancient tradition of cutting of the Kriya. So if we could have the family rise, please. A poem. I like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave when my life is done. Death has taken our beloved Jeanette Myers. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O oh God, and be with them. For Jeanette's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever. For her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Psalm 23. Adonai Rohi Lo Echsar Bino Teshe Yarbitzeni Ame Menuchot Ame Menuchot Nav she shove, ye shove. Yan cheni ve magle hit sedek. Yan cheni ve magle sedek. Laman shimo. Gam ki lech. Begit sam of it. Lo hirara ki atahi mahadi shiftecha umi shantecha hema yenachabuni taharoch lefanai lefanai 
Shuhan neged sorirai Di shahan ta Vashem eroshi Kosi revaya Ach tov achesed Yirdifuni Koyeme chayai Koyeme chayai Vishavti Vivet Adonai Leorech Yami Adonai Rohi Loech Sar Adonai Rohi Loech Sar the English translation to the 23rd Psalm can be found inside your pamphlet. If you'd like, please read along with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From the book of Proverbs, we read about Eshet Chayil, about a woman of valor, the epitome of Jeanette. A woman of valor, who can find? She is more precious than pearls. Her husband trusts in her, and so he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm, all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but she excels them all. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevarach. God has given, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. An ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the shadow that falls on us. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a good name, a name like Jeanette Myers, endures beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us Jeanette, a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in her life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love as we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. Let us take a few moments now to pray in silence as we remember Jeanette and the impact she had on our lives. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, be acceptable in your sight. God, our rock, 
our rock and our redeemer. God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jeanette was a woman who was all about family, her greatest joy was her family. She was married to her David, may his memory be for a blessing, for almost 60 years. She was a teacher in the Chicago Public Schools, and after her three sons, Gary, Michael, and Stephen were old enough, she returned to teach in the Skokie School District. I knew Jeanette through her volunteer work at Keshet. She was a proud and dedicated member of the Keshet Grandparents Club. She truly enjoyed being with those Keshet kids. I also have fond memories of her attending special Temple Jeremiah music programs and how much she enjoyed them. Who better to share words and memories about their grandmother than two of her grandchildren? I'd like to invite Brian and Jesse to please come up. Thank you for coming, everybody. I had an extraordinary grandmother. Jeanette helped shape me by her example, and she spoiled me with her love. My grandma constantly stressed the importance of family, education, and giving back to the community. She and my grandfather were voracious readers and instilled a love of reading and learning in me. They were passionate about politics, inspired a curiosity about world events in me. They were also deeply into opera, and they tried to pass that along, but that didn't really work out. My two grandmothers were extremely close friends, but they had a playful competition for who could show me the best time started when I was four years old. I slept at my grandma Natalie's house and asked for a drink. She gave me a glass of milk, and apparently I told her, you know, the other grandma has chocolate milk. And then it was off to the races. They always made sure uh, to bring their A game whenever I came over. In, in retrospect, a chocolate milk comment worked out in my favor. Grandma and gra grandpa took me to many museums on a trip to Springfield and constantly tried to teach me about the world. As grandma got older, she would call on me to explain to her how to use her computer. That was at times a Herculean task, but for me it was a labor of love. Grandma, I am so grateful to you and grandpa for the love you shared with me. I love you and I miss you already. Grandma and I had a very special connection. After raising three sons and a stream of grandsons, she was excited to have a little girl. Like all her grandchildren, she showered me with love throughout my life. My grandma and I had a special bond over teaching. She always got a kick out of the stories I would tell her about modern day teenagers. She would ask me if teachers still sent kids to the chalkboard for grammar practice. She was absolutely shocked when I explained that iPads had replaced chalkboards, and, it went, and when it came to correcting grammar, there's an app for that. She would ask if it was difficult to read their long handwritten essays, and I remember the shock on her face when I said, handwritten, grandma, there's no paper anymore. I can only imagine the incredible impact she made on her students' lives year after year. When I first met my now husband, Miles, we soon figured out that Grandma Jeanette was Miles' dad's fourth grade teacher. In fact, his dad lived down the street from Grandma and Grandpa, and Hal and Uncle Stephen were best friends. Grandma told me it was a sign and that Miles and I were meant to be. 
After retiring, Grandma volunteered at the Keshet Day School, which was so close to her heart. She absolutely adored the kids, and the staff and the kids adored her right back. Both Grandma and Grandpa loved Adam tremendously and were so amazed at the progress he made because of Keshet. There was so much to love about Grandma Jeanette. I will miss her, but I speak on behalf of all her grandchildren when I say she leaves an incredible legacy of service and set a beautiful example for all of us. Jeanette's nephew, Howard, and niece, Anne, were like children to her. Howard will now share some thoughts. I've got my handkerchief right here. I would like to uh, also say hello to my brother, Mark, who is in, in Arizona watching on TV, I would suspect, or streaming, and uh, my cousin, uh, Terry, who is in San Diego, both of whom have COVID. Good afternoon, friends and family. Uh, I, most, I know that most of you have seen me up here before, and I want you to know that I do not relish being the family eulogist. But at this afternoon, it is my great honor to speak about my beloved aunt, Jeanette Favor Myers, so that we can all honor her and celebrate her long, loving life. I first met Jeanette on or about October 28, 1949. I have known and loved my dear Aunt Jeanette, or as I called her, Aunt Jeanette, one word for longer than most. And if you haven't figured it out yet, October 28, 1949 was the day of my birth. And my, both, my most treasured gift from that day was a card that said, Dear Howie, I'm so glad that you were here. I hope this fits, darling nephew. OK, see you soon, Auntie Jeanette. That card sits on my desk today. My heart is broken. Losing Jeanette, my longest and closest friend, was the last connection to my history. My parents, my grandparents, and at this moment, I truly feel like an orphan. But despite my broken heart, I know that I am immensely fortunate to have had a pal like Jeanette for so many years. Gary told me, that Jeanette had instructed him not to let Howard talk too long. <laughs> my response to my dear cousin is, try and stop me. I have a lot to say. Jeanette was born here in Chicago on August 11, 1929, and grew to be a toddler just in time for the Great Depression. To hear Jeanette tell the story, we were poor, but we, meaning my mom and her, didn't know it. Grandpa Hennick worked hard as a finisher of silver and jewelry, a skill that he learned as a boy in Poland. My grandma Feci was a skilled seamstress, and although she worked on to dust in a dress factory, she came home and she sewed clothes for Jeanette and my mom, Bess. Let's see. So despite being children of the Depression, they were the best dressed girls in school. Jeanette often spoke of how different it was for her to be raised and my mom to be raised by immigrants, <clears throat> different from all her friends who had American-born parents. In the Faber's home, sharing Jewish culture was first, education was second, and food was ubiquitous, pervasive, and oppressive at times. My grandpa Hanuk was bullish about reading and education. My, the Faber home at 942 Washtenaw was filled with books, mostly in Yiddish, but plenty in English because grandpa Hanuk read to make up for his lack of education in Poland by learning to read and write English and studying to be a citizen. And I remember, this is not even in my speech, but the memory just jumped into my head 
of the first and only letter I received from Grandpa when I was in overseas. And he had, I don't know, he must have had somebody help him with the grammar and the spelling, but he managed to write me a letter in English. I am convinced that my mom and Jeanette raised their children in the image of our Grandpa Henoch. I too spent many afternoons at the Washington apartment, the home of Henoch Feitchi and a 20-something Jeanette. My mother would drop me off at Grandma Feitchi's when she went to work, and Grandma would speak to me in Yiddish and constantly feed me. When Grandma came home, Grandpa came home, he would take me for a walk on Division Street where we'd go buy a Yiddish forward, and then he would take me to the park. Frequently, Jeanette came home first, took me by the hand, brought me to an ice cream parlor and a toy store. There is a story that Jeanette tells. One afternoon, she was, sitting, she was coming home from college and found a four-year-old, excuse me, me, sitting on the front stoop of the building. She asked me why I was sitting there instead of inside the apartment, and I replied, I'm not going in until Grandma stops trying to feed me. Jeanette was my pal. She would always find time from her college studies to take me places and buy me gifts. And Jeanette, I would tell her my truck broke, and Jeanette would immediately run out, and the day or two later, there would be a brand new red truck for me. These memories are so per pervasive that last year when I decided to find a used pickup truck to haul my sculpture around, I thought, because all I needed to do was tell Aunt Jeanette, and a truck would appear on the driveway. In retrospect, I'm sure that Yiddish was a first language for me, and it wasn't until many years later that Grandma would speak to me in English. And since I was studying German in high school, whenever I attempted to respond in Yiddish, it came out sounding like German, to which Grandma would complain, Deutsch, Deutsch, sprech mir kein Deutsch. In English, is just German, German, don't speak German. And as time moved on, Jeanette brought home her new fiance, David. I was not happy, and I was distraught that I was no longer the number one man in her life. Our friendship sort of passed in the background as Jeanette and Dave attended to raising the three sons and their community in Skokie. Of course, despite the demands of raising a family, we spent many holidays and outings with Jeanette, Dave, and the boys. There was also the Fellowship of the Arbiter Ring, a Jewish cultural organization that was the breeding ground for our Yiddish education and was the community anchor for the Faber, Sandruff, and Myers family. As an older teenager, I was surrounded by a bevy of little boy cousins whom I had little in common with, beginning with Gary, then my brother Mark, Michael, and Stephen not forgetting my other cousins from the other branch of the family, Terry and Scott. As I made my way through adolescence, high school and college, followed by four years in the United States Air Force, these family bonds held firm, so much so that years later, after Gary, Michael, and Stephen had grown to adulthood and spawned their own families and professional lives, Jeanette and I rekindled our friendship. We had many things in common. First, we were both educators. Jeanette, as you heard, a public elementary school teacher and I at the university. But mostly, we shared a fervent love for our Jewish heritage, especially the Yiddishkeit that we learned at the Arbitering schools and at the knees of Henach and Feci. Unlike my mother and grandmother, Jeanette always treated me like a contemporary. One story that sticks in my memory was on the occasion of my father's shiva, I was about 30. It was 1980 or 1981, at the family home in Morton Grove. As you might know, it is not uncommon for Jewish men to be treated like, by, treated like little boys by their mothers and their grandmothers and their aunts, well into adulthood. At some point that evening, some decision had to be made concerning the disposition of my father and the shiva. I don't remember what. But Jeanette approached me and asked, Howard, what should we do about the... It, I was speechless, as no one had ever asked me to make a decision for the family. At that moment, I finally felt grown up. In fact, it was always that day. When I returned home 
for my years in uniform overseas, I told the family that I wanted to be addressed, no longer wanted to be addressed by that diminutive appellation they were used to calling me, and that from now on, I wish to be known as Howard. It took years to affect that change. I mean years. But Jeanette immediately abided my wishes and never again called me by that other name. I'm very grateful for that. Mary Ann, my wife, and I would spend at least one night a week every month meeting for dinner with Jeanette and Dave at some nearby restaurant or spending the day at some local attraction. We went to the zoo, the botanical gardens, and once we took a trip up to Wadsworth, Illinois, to see the Lippins on her stallions. When Dave became ill, we stood by and brought carry-out dinners to the apartment in Northbrook. We did what we could to help and made sure that our friendship remained unaltered by age and illness. When Dave left us, Jeanette and, I Jeanette and I rekindled the closeness we had so many years ago, and we would talk on the phone every day. Marianne and I did our best to attend to her needs as adjuncts to Gary, Michael, and Stephen and their families. And we still went on outings, just like the days when Dave was with us, went to the Botanical Gardens, the zoo, to sculptural showings of my works and to concerts where my music was played until Jeanette's health made it impossible. Jeanette would frequently delight in reminding that I used to change your diapers. And my response was always, well, Jeanette, if you stick around long enough, you may get a chance to do that again. <laughs> then we would sit and talk, telling old family stories, arguing about politics and the state of the country. Jeanette would often chastise me when my criticism of the country was too critical. Jeanette loved our country, an affection no doubt born of Grandpa Hennach and passed to me, my siblings and cousins, through my mom and Jeanette. Among Jeanette's legacy are her three sons, their wives and fit children. What were once a bevy of little boys at family gathering are now distinguished gentlemen. My cousins Gary, Michael and Stephen. It is unnerving to see those little boys as old men. But then again, I am horrified every morning when I see an old man who has found his way into the mirror of my medicine cabinet. And now we will go on with our, only our memories of Jeanette and Jeanette, the three generations of her family. That she lived a long and fruitful life is only little comfort. She is gone and we remain full of sorrow at her passing. Not because we fear or dread death, but because our days forward from this moment on will be without our beloved Aunt Jeanette. An American by birth, Mary Fry wrote this poem in 1932 in response to the plight of a young Jewish, Jewish, German Jewish woman, Margaret Schwarzkopf, who was staying with her when Margaret's mother died. Excuse me. The young woman told Mary Fry that she never had a chance to stand by her mother's grave and shed a tear. Mary Fry, the poet, wrote these comforting words for Margaret, and I'd like to share them with you. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sun on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the sweet uplifting brush of quiet birds in circling flight. I am the soft star shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not here. I did not die. Many of you know that although fervent June's mindful of our heritage, our family is mostly cool on the subject of worship. Sorry, can't you? I myself am a confessed and devout atheist. Yet, the scriptures stand as a pinnacle of literature full of wisdom that offers these final words. And I echo the cantor because we found the same thing to say. And I will, but I will paraphrase from Proverbs. As Sheikh Chayil, the virtuous woman. Many women have done well, but you, dear Anchonette, surpass them all.
And finally, representing her sons, Michael will share words from his heart, going directly to the heart. So the challenge of going last is trying not to be repetitious. And we did not meet and plan what we were going to say, but there is a theme. So words from the poet. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. On behalf of Gary and Karen, Stephen and Tracy, and all of our family, I want to thank you for joining us today to honor our mother, Jeanette Faber Myers. This is a day of mourning and of sadness, but also a day of commemoration and of celebration. We remember with love a woman who led an extraordinary life devoted to family, to friends, to her profession, and to the service of others. As you have heard, Mom was immensely proud of her immigrant parents. She often marveled at how they came to this country with nothing, without the knowledge of the language, without jobs, and without knowing what the future would hold for them. What they did have was a confidence in the future and the knowledge that whatever the challenges they would find in America, they were infinitely better than what they had left behind. Mom always said how grateful she was that her parents worked hard to provide for her and for her sister and made sure that they were educated. They also stressed the importance of family and friends. Mom always remembered that her parents' one bedroom apartment was always open to extended gatherings of family and was a space where her friends were always welcome. She also remembered that they instilled in her the importance of service to others. No matter how little they might have had, they were always willing to share, to make a charitable contribution, to serve on a committee, and to strive to make the world a better place. These were the lessons that mom carried for a lifetime and that she and dad passed on to us. She loved being a teacher. She cared deeply for her students and was a lifetime learner herself. When they moved to Skokie to raise their family, mom had no intention of rejoining the workforce. Instead, she became active with the Middleton School PTA. And in true Jeanette fashion, she didn't just become a member, she became its president. Her participation with the PTA led to a job offer. She taught at Middleton for over 20 years. And although she retired decades ago, the friendships that she made with her colleagues continued for the rest of her life, and we are so honored that some of you are here today. Mom made friends wherever she went and within every organization that she joined, whether it was the PTA, the League of Women Voters, the National Council for Jewish Women, or the Workman Circle Branch, <coughs> or, with neighbor, or with her neighbors. Friendships came easily to her, and they lasted a lifetime. She was a wonderful wife and mother. She was immensely proud of her three sons, and even if she didn't quite love it, she consistently and enthusiastically attended all of the Little League, junior high, and high school sporting events, and my less than stellar piano recitals. 
lessons teller. She encouraged us to pursue our professional dreams and beamed with pride at having three college graduates. She was also thrilled to welcome her daughters-in-law into the family and at long last got the daughters that she always wanted. But as proud as she was of us, we soon learned what it meant to be second best. The arrival of her grandchildren, Brian, Adam, Jesse, Jeremy, and Andrew, was truly a wonderful experience for her. She embraced the opportunity to babysit and to spend time with the next generation. She loved you fiercely. Having a grandchild with special needs was not met with sadness, but with another opportunity to serve. She volunteered at Keshet and became an active supporter of that organization. I could go on talking about mom, but she would want us to get on with it. Her legacy will continue and all of us, her children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, friends and extended family are all better off for having had her as part of our lives. Mom, we love you, we will miss you, and we are, all, are so very, very proud of you. Thank you. One final poem. God only takes the best. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So God put God's arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us God only takes the best. If you are able, please rise for the El Male, the memorial prayer. El Male Rachamim, Shochein Bam Romim, Am Tsem Nucha Nuchana, Tacha Kanfe Hashikina, Im Kiroshimu Torim. Kizahar haraki hamazirim et nishmatra enu shahal chale olama balaharachamim yastire habise terkena favle olamim vitro vitro hachaim et nishmata Adonai hu. Nachalata v'tanuach b'shalom, amishkava v'nomar, amen. O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence, among the holy and pure whose shine is the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Jeanette Myers, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring her under the cover of thy wings. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may her repose be peace. And let us all say, Amen. This does conclude the service here at the chapel. Interment will take place at Westlawn Cemetery. That's 7801 West Montrose Avenue in Norwich. There will be no procession to the cemetery. If you are joining the family at the cemetery, we have printed directions that you may take or you can plug it in your phone, whatever is easier for you if you plan on joining them at the cemetery. We're going to hopefully resume with the interment, say about 3, 320, 325, okay? So get there as quickly but safely as, as possible. The following people have been selected to serve as pallbearers. Also one final note before I announce the pallbearers, there also will be no formal shiva due to COVID. The following people will serve as pallbearers. When I call your name, if you please step forward. Brian Myers, Jesse Nagel, Jeremy Myers, Andrew Myers, 
Miles Nagel, Howard Sandroff, Ann Koff, and Honorary Pallbearer Adam Myers. Everyone, please rise. It's the family, the canter, and Mrs. Myers are escorted from the chapel. Oh, Paul Bear's right this way. <laughs> 